Hey everybody, welcome to Bridgepoint Online this week. I'm Andy and I oversee our online campus. If you're new to Bridgepoint, please let us know by saying hi in the live chat. We would love to meet you. Before we get going today, I just wanted to remind you about the church-wide survey that we launched last week. Our elders really want to hear from you. So if you've not had a chance to respond, please look for the link in the weekly update section of our app or click the link in the live chat or the video description. Coming up today, we are starting a short new series called The Anatomy of a Leader, where we'll be looking at the book of Romans in the Bible to pull some truths about who God created us to be. Tyler is kicking the series off and I'm excited for his message a little later in the service. Speaking of leadership, the global leadership is coming up this week and we're still able to offer the discount pricing. I really would encourage you, if you can make the time, don't miss this opportunity to invest in your future. I have taken away so many nuggets of wisdom from GLS over the years that have really helped me in every area of my life. If you're not local, you can still attend online. Just look for that separate online ticket link on the GLS page of our website. As always, we'll put links in the chat, the video description, and the weekly update section of the app. We're about to get things going here at our Tyrone campus. So if you're watching live, I'll see you in the chat shortly. God bless everyone. How's it going, church? We're standing to your feet. It's good to be together. Let's press in and worship the Lord. Are you hungry for God this morning? I'm hungry for the Lord. Let's go. Conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. See your name in the dark, and it changes everything. We sing with all we are, and we claim your victory. Let it Yeah, the 
Bridgepoint. What's going on? How are we doing? Happy Sunday. Glad you're here with us. If you're joining us online or here in the room at Tyrone, welcome. We're excited about what we are gonna be doing today as a community. We're gonna be worshiping together, starting a new series on the anatomy of a leader. It's a new two-part series that we're excited about. So glad you're joining us, especially if it's your first time with us. Gabe has been around for a while, but I feel like I should reintroduce him. He's been gone a couple weeks, exciting stuff going on. Show him your hand. Boy got hitched, got married. And when you get married, things change, change for the good, which is why he is wearing these sharp loafers looking stylish. I'm super jealous. He's already gotten a lot of comments on them, but hey, congrats. Listen, as we start today, as we, as we continue to move in, knowing that we're not alone is sometimes just an important reminder. Seeing that we don't gather in this place with just one or two other people, though that would be enough. We're here as a community. We're here collectively joining together, pursuing, seeking what God has for us. And so seeing that as a privilege and a blessing, let us turn to somebody around us, maybe introduce yourself, say what's up, high five, dab, whatever, but greet the person next to you as we continue. Good stuff. Well, hey, again, just to reiterate, um, we're glad that you're here. And the most important part of today is that you come open to whatever God has in store for your life. Um, the hope is that you have walked in this morning ready and open to the possibility that God wants to move into your life and God wants to move in and through your life. But maybe you are walking in a little bit apprehensive. Maybe you woke up a little bit stressed and today was a busy and stressful, anxiety-filled morning. So I think it's powerful that we're about to sing about the Holy Spirit in this next song. And it talks about, as this song is very familiar to many of us, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. So that's the question I would propose to you. Is the Holy Spirit welcome in your life right now in this moment? And if he is, what if he has something in store for you that you were not anticipating or expecting? So church, would you join us, continue to join us in worshiping King Jesus this morning? Let's worship.
our chance to lift up distractions, things going on in our life, to be present with God, to intercede for one another and just be present with the Holy Spirit. Let him fill you with the joy and peace and hope that you've been longing for. Just listen to the Holy Spirit for a minute.
rising in this room, maybe for the first time for someone. Um, and I just wanna encourage you that God is with you, that he's so present with you and whatever you're facing. And it's so easy to fixate on the waves, but we, when we lift our eyes to the cross, that's where we find our hope. That's where we find our peace. So if it's okay, we're gonna go back into the bridge because um, I think some of us need to declare that this morning. I know I do in a lot of my circumstances. And so we're just gonna let faith rise like never before. So let's sing this out, let faith rise. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. So let faith rise up, oh heart is gonna believe, let faith rise up in me. One more time. Let faith rise up, oh heart believe, let faith rise up in me. Jesus, thank you for being everything that we need. Thank you for allowing your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Um, and thank you for 
just being present with us this morning, maybe encountering us in a new way, encountering you in a new way, God. And just, um, we thank you for all that you are. And um, I pray that we continue to be present with you um, to allow your spirit to guide us and be open to what you wanna do in us and around us, God. Um, yeah, thank you for your goodness. And um, we just love you. Be with us, it's in your name that we pray, amen. Y'all can take a seat. All right, happy Sunday, Bridgepoint. How are we doing? You feeling good? Awesome. And we give a shout out to our downtown crew, Seminole, everybody tuning in online. Of course, everybody here at the Tyrone campus. I'm so pumped that you're in the house today. We're starting a quick two-week series called The Anatomy of a Leader. And, and here's why I think this is so important, because I'm, I'm betting that it's going to matter for you. And if it's not for you, I'm betting that it's going to matter for people that are in your sphere, your loops, your circles. Because it, it, here's what I observe often as a pastor, and here's part of the weight I carry for us living in our culture here in America, in St. Petersburg, wherever you find yourself. But I wanna kick off with this big question. How is it possible that there is so much opinion on self-help in our culture, yet it feels like so many live unfulfilled? How, how is it possible, word chosen intentionally, how is it possible that there's so much opinion on self-help all around us? It's never, been able, it's never been easier to access that, to tune into that, to seek that out. There's so much opinion on that. And yet I would argue as a pastor, from my perspective, more and more people are living lives unfulfilled unfulfilled. Now don't, don't mistake this message and don't mistake this pastor as being someone that's against self-help. I'm all about finding a great Christian counselor. Do that myself. I'm all about crushing some good podcasts. It's about all I listen to. I'm all about finding good people that will pour into, develop, coach, lead, mentor, uh, speak into your world. I'm all about those things. But, but it has to be noticeable, right, to more than just me. How is there so much opinion on that? And yet so many folks lead lives that are unfulfilled. What, what does it mean about the life that they're leading? What does it mean about the purpose that they're leading of, of their own selves? What does it mean about their, their calling, their mission, what they're giving themselves to? If so many people, feel unfulfilled, and maybe that's you. Maybe at least to a degree, maybe you're tuning in, sitting in on a campus right now, and, and you're, that's part of your story is you're like, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to find it. I, I'm listening to the right people. I'm listening to the right podcasts. I'm reading the right books, going to the right conferences or events or whatever else. Maybe that's your story, but there's still something inside that you would say, yeah, but there's, there's something in me that still feels like something is missing. And here's what I want you to know. If you're not careful, if I'm not careful, if, if we're not careful, this big idea will become true for us. That if, if we don't lead our God-given purpose, we'll end up living someone else's purpose. If we don't lead our God-given purpose, if, if we don't lead a life that is our purpose from God, if we don't invest in it, if we don't seek to understand it, if we don't embrace it, if we don't strive for it, if we don't lead it for ourselves, because only you can lead you. If we don't lead our God-given purpose, we'll end up living someone else's purpose. 
And I think this series, I think this conversation today matters so much in light of, of kind of where we all find ourselves. I mean, we're kind of nearing that fall rhythm, uh, at least for parents, it's kind of back to school. For students, it's back to school. It, kind of a more stable rhythm. But just in light of everything that's going on in the life of our church, our, our mission is going strong, helping people, all people to get closer to God. August is gonna be a really busy month for us. There's so much good stuff going on, but here's what's also true for every single one of us as individuals. The kingdom of God is at stake in our homes, with our families, in our neighborhoods, at our workplaces, our schools, our communities, our teams, the people that we interact with. The kingdom of God is at stake. And if you and I aren't intentional about leading our God-given purpose, living into it, discovering it, and running into it with all that we've got, then we'll end up not only missing our purpose, but ultimately affecting the growth of God's kingdom right here on earth, in Pinellas County, in your neighborhood, on your team, at your school. What, what does that mean? Like, what, what, how, is that, how is that a real thing? How, how can the, the most connected, information accessible culture that's ever existed on planet earth can exist at exactly the same time as more and more people that are reaching a place of saying, I, I think I'm missing my purpose or I'm trying to live it, but I, I feel so unfulfilled. And, and I wanna process that today. I wanna talk about it today because I think there's a lot of us tuning in, maybe even right here today, that that would be true of you. And, and I think, I think this little quick two-part series, the anatomy of a leader discovering what that means about who you are and what God's doing in your world would make such an incredible difference in your world. And I know it'll make a difference in mine if we'll aim to discover what our God-given purpose might look like. And I want you to take my word for it. I want to go back to a guy named Paul. You've heard a lot about him in New Testament, wrote a lot of the books in there. Radical story that he met Jesus and it changed everything. And, and Paul wrote this uh, as a new believer, a leader in the early church where there weren't church buildings on every corner, but there were gatherings of people just trying to figure out what it meant to be believers, followers of Jesus, to live his teachings and to be his people. He was writing as a leader of saying, man, this is what it looks like in light of what Jesus has done for us. And one of the letters that he wrote to the early church, he couldn't text them or, or drop them a Slack or an email. He would have to actually handwrite a letter. I can't imagine the hand cramps that would go involved in something like that. I'm thankful that it looks like this today. But Paul was writing to a church in Rome. We know it as the book of Romans in our Bible. But as he was writing to this church in Rome, he spent 11 chapters of his letter. We call them chapters, 11 11 chapters of his letter saying, guys, remember what Jesus has done for you. And just to make sure we're on the same place, page, because I don't think we should ever tire of hearing it, but for, for everyone in this room, online, on a campus, or catching up with this message later, listen to this. You, you, Paul would tell it, read the first 11 chapters in Roman. You were worth the very life of God. God the Father sent his son to die in your place and mine so that we might live life the way he intended for us. That's, that's your story. It's true about who you are, whether you're embracing it or not. You and I were worth the life of God so that we would live Paul spends 11 chapters saying, guys, don't forget that. Don't doubt it. And when you doubt it, look back at the cross. Remember what he's done. And, and when, when you doubt that moment, remember that they laid his lifeless body in a tomb. But you could go and walk in that tomb. You still can go there today, the actual tomb where Jesus' body was laid. It's still empty because he stood up and he walked out forever defeating sin and death so that you and I might live but are we? But are we? I mean, does that sound like your life, your story, your mission? 
Paul spends 11 chapters setting that up, and then he kind of takes a pivot point in Romans chapter 12. I want you to hear directly from Paul today, and I think this matters so much for your story because it's mattered for mine. This passage has been such an encouragement to to me this week as I've prepared it. Paul, Paul said, remember God's mercy, remember his love, remember the cross, remember the empty tomb, go there to remind yourself if you need to. And then in Romans chapter 12, Paul, the radical transformation because he met Jesus and he, and he saw the truth in, in Jesus's death and resurrection. And then Paul writes this, and I want you to hear his words and see if it applies to how you and I lead our, the kind of lives we lead today, how we live our lives. Romans chapter 12, verse one says this, Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. Remember, 11 chapters. God is so merciful. It matters for you. God is so merciful. I appeal to you. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. That's a wild, wild way to go about this. It's a wild thought to even consider. But Paul is saying to everyone, remember what Jesus has done for you. Remember how loved you are. Remember how purposeful you are. Remember how intentional you are. And because of that, then make sure you do everything you can to turn around and present all that you are back to God. And that's what worship looks like. Now, it's, it's odd language, I'll give you that. He was talking to a culture that was normalized uh, for, for uh, animal sacrifices as a way to honor God. Paul was speaking to them in a way that said, hey, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In other words, Paul's saying, take all that you are. Take all that you are today. Take all that your story has led to. Take all the broken, imperfect moments. Take all of your strengths and weaknesses, your flaws and the things that you're good at. Take all of your interests, all of your abilities. Take all of your story. Take all of the parts that you hope to never revisit and all of the parts that have been milestone markers in the best way in your journey. And take all of who you are and just say, God, here's all of me? Would you use me to be a part of something that's so much bigger than I could ever accomplish on my own? That's what worship looks like. It's a really cool thought. I appreciate the couple people that have had their coffee this morning and are engaged with the message so far. The rest of you should wake up. You're going to love this, I promise. Paul's saying the moment that we reach a place of saying, God, I, I, I'm recognizing what you've done for me. And my response is to simply say, here I am. Here I am, God. Here's, here's all of me. And the fact that you would love somebody like me, the fact that you would love a sinner like me with a story like mine, with imperfections like mine, with sin like mine. God, if, if, big, capital I, capital F, God, if you could use somebody like me, then God, here I am. And I think there's a God in heaven that's far too often looking down at his children, saying, if you would just offer it back to me, you would discover what I have for you. But so long as we continue to live our lives, to walk out our doors, to go back to our Monday to Friday, nine to five rhythms and routines of saying, I've got it, God, I'll pick you back up next Sunday. I wonder how often the Father in heaven is like, that's not what I meant for you. I wonder how often many of us are spinning our wheels, working really hard to try to make something of ourselves or provide for our family or step into the ideal or the American dream and we're working so hard to accomplish something that was never ours to take on from the beginning. Carrying the weight, the expectation, the pressure, picking up the debt and the frustration and the heaviness because there's simply never been a moment And there's never been an ongoing conversation to just say, God, here's all of me. God, and I just want to offer it back to you in light of your love and your mercy. Because God, I just want to believe that you have more for me than what I could have for me in and of my own strength. 
Because Paul continues this thought. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God. That's what worship looks like. And then Paul says this, do not be conformed. Do not, that's a big word. Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed, be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, God, God's saying, I'm not trying to hide from you, Tyler, what your purpose is. I'm not trying to hide who I've made you to be. I'm not trying to keep it a secret that you have to wander all of your life saying, did I get it? Did I miss it? Have I hit it? Have I walked in my purpose? God is simply saying, I've got something for you. I just need you to come to me to receive it. And I think that's so huge to understand that it begins the moment that we're willing to say, God, here's all of me. Will you help me to see what you have in store for me? Can I ask you something that I've had to ask myself? Have you ever had a moment where you ask God what he intended for your life? If that answer is no, then why do we get so shocked at how frequently we feel like we're living unfulfilled? Can I ask you another question? Do you ask him regularly? Because you change and you grow and you shape. Culture changes, grows, and shapes. Circumstances change and grow and shape. We ought to regularly say, God, here's all of me. What do you have for me to serve you? But do we? Let me put it to you this way. This past week, Judah, he's my seven-year-old, uh, almost second grader. And uh, this past week, we had a tooth that hit the it's time to come out stage. And I, I love these moments. I love reliving them. I can, I can still remember as a kid the excitement and the anxiety that goes into it. And with Judah, Judah's my big feeling kid, all right? He feels to the extreme. He's competitive. He loves to play. But when it comes to teeth, this is like, I think he said his five, fifth or seventh tooth, somewhere in there, that he's lost. But when it comes to that, the moments, the few moments before the tooth comes out, you would think I'm asking to to do open heart surgery on the kid to just pull the tooth off. I mean, it's that big of a deal. I can't do this. I can't do this. It's going to hurt. Don't pull it. I want to do it. I'm scared. It can't happen. I'm leaving it in forever. It's not going to stay in forever. It has to come out. No, I can't. This is not going to happen. It's going to bleed everywhere. I can't do this. That was Thursday night. (laughs) I love on all seven, if it's been seven, on all seven teeth that are pulled, the last four, he has so much fun laughing at all the big feelings he had that never end up happening the way he feared them to. They they never go that way because when the tooth comes out, there's been a couple times that Tiffany's pulled it in the middle of of a, I can't do this. And she has to stop him and say, Judah, we already did. The tooth is out. But this is 37 minutes past bedtime this past Thursday. The motions were high, like open heart surgery was prepped, like he couldn't do it. I was ready to do it. I, actually, I just wanted to like accidentally get too close and bump it out because it was just ready to be, I mean, it was dangling by a thread. And I took a moment as a dad because everything within me wanted to be like, get, let me just pull the tooth out. And I said, Judah, Remember all the times that we laugh at this? Here's what I need you to do. I need you to take a big, deep breath. And I need you to summon one little moment of courage. And courage doesn't mean the fear goes away. Courage means you press right into the middle of it. And I need you to give it a yank. And that tooth is going to come out, buddy. But it's only going to come out if you're willing to be really brave and summon one big breath of courage. <gasps> No, a big breath, not a series of choking, okay? (laughs) And Judah takes a moment and he settles himself down and big feelings, big moment, open heart surgery. And he's like, okay, dad. (sighs) I pulled it out, dad, I pulled it out. And he stood up and we chest bumped in his room after bedtime and we were celebrating and the tooth fairy showed up just like we knew she would. And it was a massive moment in our house. But you know what it took? It took him reaching a renewing of his mind moment. 
because the fear was loud. The emotion was real, that the anxiety of it was flowing through that little boy's body. And that was a huge, huge deal. And that's such a simple illustration because I know as adults, as teenagers and students, that oftentimes the pain is much more extreme than that. The circumstances are much weightier than that. The fear is much louder than that. And the situation is far from a laughing matter compared to that. But guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think it's in those moments that we most frequently miss our purpose because we're busy dealing with only what we can see and feel instead of reminding ourselves that we still follow the God that holds the whole world in his hands. Here's what I mean. Many of us, when we're searching for our purpose, are looking to see what influencers do, are doing to try to discover it for us. But then we just become like them. Many of us in searching for our purpose are looking to see what our party leaders are doing, but in order for them to be elected, they have to sell us on why they need to be elected, which means they need to create just enough fear that they can solve and deal with. And so we live our lives in fear saying, well, if that person doesn't get elected, we're all in trouble. We've, we look to social media, we look to news outlets where their job is to hook us into their product and they do that by saying, you need to be afraid, but we have the answers and we have the solutions to all that you're facing. Well, people are getting paid to sell us and market us things and we live in a world that's not attacking us with facts and information, but fear and solicitation. And then we wonder why our lives feel so unfulfilled because we're not renewing our minds on anything that's meaningful. This is a big deal. This is a big, big deal. And, and yet Paul really clearly laid it out there for us. Romans chapter 12, verse two, gives us a process for life transformation that if we're willing to step out of what culture says is really important and into what God has purpose for each and every one of you, I wonder if we discover our purpose, we discover transformation that ultimately this world actually has proven that it can't offer us. How did he say to do that? The first step is renewing your mind. And you know what happens when you renew your mind? It changes how you think about things. And when we begin to change how we think about things, that begins to change how we see things. Because we, we think about them differently. Because we've renewed our mind. We've focused our mind correctly. When we change how we see things, that's going to change what we do about things. And when we begin to change what we do about things, that changes who we are. And when we change who we are, that changes our lives. That's the process. It's been there from the beginning. Paul wrote about it hundreds, thousands of years ago. But it begins when we renew our minds. So can I ask you something? Where do you go to renew your mind? Your favorite news channel? Your favorite social media influencer, politician, thought leader? Because if this doesn't begin the process, then we end up just taking on identities, perspectives, and direction from other people that can't transform the human heart. Only Jesus has proven to be able to do that. And then we gotta step back and ask ourselves, maybe it's no wonder so many people are leading lives unfulfilled because they're leading lives missing their purpose. Apply this circumstance to the difficult coworker or classmate at your school. God, will you, will you help me understand how loved they are, that you love them and I, I, I can't right now? Do you think that would help you change how you see? It doesn't mean you have to like them, but it could help how you see, change how you see. Apply this to a weight loss journey. Apply this to your spiritual life. Apply this to your, uh, your dreams, your aspirations, your career trajectory. Apply this to searching for your purpose. 
It starts here, renewing your mind. And that slowly begins to change all that we are, but not from the outside, from the inside. What if that, that's what God was up to? But what if that was the, the purpose from the beginning that all of us walk in? And here's why I say that. If we don't lead our God-given purpose, we'll end up living someone else's purpose because we're gonna search for it somewhere, right? We're gonna seek it out. That's, we're meaning makers by nature. And here's what's scary. The Bible's inviting us to renew our minds, but we certainly have an option not to. So I looked up the antonym, big word alert. I looked up the opposite of renew, and here's the reality. Opposite of the word renew, so if we don't renew our minds, your choice is to reverse it, is to set it aside, is to stamp it out, suppress it, or end it. And can I ask you something? When it comes to people that you know in your life and your circles, how often does this become benchmarks or definitions of how they're living their purpose out? They're feeling like they're going the opposite way of what they were meant to do. They're feeling like they've been cast aside or set aside. They're feeling stamped out, suppressed, marginalized, or they're feeling like they're at the end of their rope, missing what God intended for them. And I wonder if it's because we're simply not going back to actually renewing our minds the way Almighty God intended for us to do. How many people do you know that would have described their purpose? What would it mean for Pinellas County, for your household, your neighborhood, your classroom, or your job? if we started renewing our minds to discover God's purpose for us instead of trying to figure things out on our own. I'm confident this world would look different. I'm confident you and I would commit to living different. I'm confident we would experience something more. But not if we're not going to God for our purpose. Because here's what Paul said next, back to what he was encouraging the Roman church. Remember, you are so loved by God, Paul was saying. That's why it's so important. Renew your mind. Go back to what God has for your life and your purpose. And then Paul wrote this. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Can we pause here? You know what I think is gonna be one of the biggest stumbling blocks to you and I discovering our God-given purpose? Our pride. What does that mean for you? It means that we need to ask ourselves a couple questions. Is it time to reach out for help? Help from a counselor, from a friend, from a community, from other people? Help to say, I, I'm struggling. I need help. I'm stuck. I'm chained. I'm broken. Your pride, your pride's gonna tell you, no, don't reach out. You don't need that. You got it. Paul said, don't let your pride stop you. For some of us, it's the exact opposite. For some of us, it's time to embrace who God made you to be, to go for it, to put yourself out there, to live with a level of confidence, not pride, but confidence, to understand that God wired you and gifted you and purposed you, and it's time to get out there and live the dreams he's placed in your life. But pride will prevent that if you're not careful. Here's what Paul said next. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we though many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. 
You see, the mission of God is so much bigger than any single one of us on any Bridgepoint campus. The mission of God is so much bigger than Bridgepoint Church. The mission of God is so much bigger than Pinellas County, Florida, America. It's global and it's always been that way because we serve a big global God with big global plans. But we all have a part to play in his plan. We're all connected, dependent upon each other. And if you don't live your purpose, that affects our purpose. If I don't live mine, that affects your purpose. Because we weren't made to be lone rangers. We were made to be connected, individual members of the body that the hope of the world would be seen most brightly by a church that's committed to saying, I as an individual want to walk in my purpose, my purpose as a, as a worker, my purpose as a family member, my purpose as a classmate, as a teammate, as a pastor, as an employee, as a supervisor, as a boss, as a neighbor, as a, as a family friend, whatever that looks like, but how many of us are actively living our purpose? Simply because we're probably simply not renewing our minds. And this is where many of us are gonna tend to check out. Let me give you two things. Number one, come back next week. Next week's message is the practical way of looking what it look, looking, uh, exploring what it looks like to live out your purpose. But some of us also make this way more difficult than it was intended to be. Because the same Paul that wrote Romans said, here's what it looks like to live a purpose. You may not ever work in a church, that's a good thing. You may not ever work outside the home, that can be a good thing. You may not ever be the boss, that could be a good thing. You may always be an employee, always be a friend, always be a son or a daughter. You may always have these elements that we so frequently don't view as opportunities to lead our purpose. But Paul said, whatever you're called to, whatever it looks like, wherever God has placed you, just lead your purpose. And what does that look like? Paul said it looks like this. Invite people to follow you as you work to follow Jesus. It's just that simple. He didn't ask anybody to be perfect. He didn't ask anybody to have all the right answers. He didn't ask anybody to clean up first. He didn't ask anybody that when you stop cussing and when you get out of debt, when your life's put together, when everything looks good on the outside, Paul just said, go follow Jesus. And as you do, invite people into that journey with you. That's why the mission of Bridgepoint Church is helping people, all people get closer to God by believing in Jesus, living his teachings, and becoming his people. And if it took perfect people to do that, I'm out and so are you. But that was not the point. The point was simply, God, here's all of me. Here's all of me. The good, the bad, and all the ugly. But God, I wanna renew my mind that I might live in such a way that you purposed me to live. But I'm telling you guys, if we don't lead our God-given purpose, we'll end up living someone else's purpose. And I think when we look all around us, all over the world, you see a lot of people more committed to being a copycat or duplicate than living with a God-given purpose and leading a life that honors him in that. You are too loved by Almighty God to be someone you were never made to be. And praise Jesus, we can forever know how loved we are. Would you pray with me? God, that's, that's heavy, weighty stuff. Because I believe that for a lot of us, <clears throat> right now, God, we've, we've been putting a lot of energy and a lot of effort into trying to be someone that you never asked us to be. God, would you reorient us today? Would you renew our minds? Would you help us to focus in on who you've made us? us to be. 
And then God, would you help us to walk out the doors today and aim to be that person? Nothing more and nothing less. And God, in all the moments that our pride starts to tell us we're not valuable, in all the moments that we feel disqualified, in all the moments that we feel like we can't, God, would you help us to look at the cross and the empty tomb to remind us of how loved we are as children of God. Thank you, Jesus, that we have found purpose. It's in your name we pray, amen. <clears throat> we're gonna respond by singing a song called God, I Look to You. And I, I don't want you to rush past this moment. Don't rush out of this moment. I, I think this is the beginning of what God may be trying to speak to you as I've been processing this this week. But we're gonna sing a song that says, God, I, I wanna look to you for my identity, for my value, for my help, for who you've made me to be because that's where purpose is found, renewing our minds. And so maybe the invitation today is to simply sing, sing along with the band as they lead and to respond by saying, God, the words of this song are true for me. But, but I would be remiss to not also mention that for some of you, the quest towards purpose, the quest towards leading your God-given purpose, the quest towards discovering a life that is fulfilled and satisfied because you know who you are and you know whose you are, it might need to begin by faith decision in Jesus. That to trust that what he did 2000 years ago on the cross as in, in stepping into the role of sinless savior was for you as much as it was for me and for everyone else. That to believe that his sacrifice on the cross and that his stepping out of the tomb was enough to pay your sin debt and mine to restore and redeem the brokenness that lives in all of us and to commit our lives to discovering and walking in his love and the purpose for which he created us. That may need to be step number one or for some of you, part B of that is to come back to him. To come back saying, Jesus, I've missed it. I've walked away, I've deviated from your path, I've tried to be something that I was never intended to be, or maybe it's the pride aspect that says, Jesus, I need help. I need confidence, I need faith. So collectively we respond by saying, God, I look to you. We have a prayer and care team that would love to pray with you online. You simply click a link. In the room, we have a team that would love to not condemn, not shame, not judge. They're on the journey with you, but instead to look back to Jesus, to look back to the God that, that loves you incredibly. So out the doors, to the right, balcony, to the, down, uh, to the right and down the stairs, the prayer and care folks that would love to pray alongside you. Whatever your response is, this is a moment to renew your mind. So whatever it is, whatever it looks like for you, Let's do business with God as we stand and sing together. Amen. What a good word from Pastor Tyler. Before we even just transition, I, I really just feel stirred in my heart to press into this moment. Like, like Tyler was saying, there's something about committing our life to discovering more of who God is and who we are. And I feel like in this place today, I can tell there's a lot of people in here that this word hunger, a hunger for God, right? I feel like there's a lot of people in here that are, you're hungry for more of God. You're hungry for the next step of God. And the good news is, is God loves to answer that. And maybe there's some of us in here that, that we kind of come in and, and we don't allow excitement to have, we don't allow ourselves to press and we just kind of come and go and it's great and it's nice, but there's more of God. And the beauty is that like, he loves to satisfy our hunger. He says, like, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. That's a promise from the king of everything. So as we press in and play, this isn't just so us to have a good wrap-up song or hear amazing musicians like these guys are, but we have an opportunity to really press in and put our focus on the king of everything. So Lord, we just put our focus on you, Jesus. I pray, God, that you come and move, Lord. Stir our hunger for you, Jesus. We fix our eyes on you right now, Lord. Yeah, Jesus. Meet us every time. Meet us every time. 
We celebrate what God is doing. Yeah. Man, I don't know if it's cold in here or the Holy Spirit's working, but I got chills, you know what I mean? Hey, God is moving and we're thankful. If you wouldn't mind taking a seat just for a moment here, got a couple of things I want to share with you guys, some exciting things. Um, if you notice it on your way in, we have these lockers kind of off in the corner of the atrium there. That is for you to put your shoes and your belongings. I'm kidding. No, uh, we have a backpack drive happening. Uh, school is back. I know it's terrifying. Parents, you're celebrating. Uh, the kids are crying, but uh, school is back. So if you would uh, fill up a backpack, bring it here. We are collecting backpacks with school supplies um, throughout the next couple of Sundays. And I think next Next Sunday is the last Sunday that we are collecting. I think it says it up there on the screen. Um, but as well, we have a church survey that was launched. Um, you might have received it in an email in the weekly update. It's on the website. Um, this is basically to gather some information on uh, kind of a handful of questions, and you'll see throughout the survey. But we would love for you um, as our church family to fill this out when you get the chance. Um, and if you have any trouble navigating how to find it um, or where to fill it out, you can, um, don't hesitate to ask, and we would love to help you with that. Um, as well, we have GLS happening this week, Thursday and Friday. Um, and truthfully, if you've been a part of GLS before, if you've gone through GLS before, um, you know how big of a blessing it is to your life. Um, but I will allow Craig Rochelle to pitch it for you. Hi, my name is Craig Rochelle. I'm the pastor of Life Church, and one of the great honors of my life is to serve the Global Leadership Network to help build leaders around the world because God used the Global Leadership Summit to actually change my life and leadership. And I just want to talk to you for a minute and tell you if you've forgotten that you are a leader. What is leadership? Leadership is influence, and you have influence. You can influence your family, you can influence your friends, you can influence the people in your church and all around you, and your leadership matters so much. And that's why it is so important for you to invest in your leadership, because we never ever get better by accident. I wanna tell you that attending the Global Leadership Summit on August the 4th and the 5th is one of the best ways to grow in your leadership. We'll provide practical, actionable content from leadership experts from around the world that will help sharpen your leadership. And the good news is this weekend, we have a great opportunity for you. We want everyone in your congregation to be able to come. And so the GLN has reduced the ticket prices to only $139. Your pastor or your host can provide details, but what I promise you is when you grow in your leadership, you can make a bigger difference in the lives of the people around you. So let's do it. I'll see you there on August the 4th and the 5th. And we know that everyone wins when the leader gets better.
Cool. So hopefully you got sold there. Uh, again, if you have questions about that and how to uh, obtain a ticket um, and just kind of navigate the website and all those different things, uh, feel free to grab one of us in the atrium. Uh, feel free to come by the little booth area over there that I stand at or Travis or Robert or one of our uh, volunteers would love to walk you through that. Um, but again, all these things that we're talking about, um, it all points towards our mission. And so if you're new here for the first time, maybe you've attended Bridgepoint a little bit, uh, or maybe you or somebody that calls Bridgepoint home, our mission here at this church is helping people, all people get closer to God. And it sounds very general, right? Like what else would a church's mission be? But truly, um, these things that you see, the things that we talk about, the announcements that we share, it is intentional because it points to our mission because we are genuinely passionate about helping people get closer to God. And so our hope is that you see that in the things that we talk about after service, during worship, and in a message. Um, as well, if you've come prepared to give today, uh, there are booth or little boxes outside um, of the rows here. And then as well, you can do that online or through the app. Thank you for joining us, church. Thank you for joining us online here in the room. We love you. We will see you next Sunday. And I'll promise never to wear my loafers again. Go in peace. <laughs>